The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Giving a voice to the voiceless, pulling stories out of the shadows and putting them under the spotlight, making sure that each person is valued and cared for. This is Humanity First with Peter Evers, presented by BAMZ. Hi, everybody. It's Peter Evers here in another edition of Humanity First. Um, and this week, we have a pretty regular guest on the show. We have Re Mayor uh, Robert Sullivan, the mayor of Brockton. Uh, and he's been on many times in addressing some of the issues that are going on locally uh, in our city. Uh, and maybe a little bit uh, broader scope on some of the issues that are happening nat nat nationally and statewide uh, that affect this uh, great city. Um, and maybe some talk a, a little bit about w uh, what's going on this summer um, and uh, you know, obviously with kids out of school, what's, uh, what's happening in the city and, um, uh, and uh, how we're we reacting to some of the things that, that are affecting us locally, um, you know, crime, uh, the school system. Um, and of course, this issue of healthcare and what is happening with the hospitals in Brockton, now that we've heard that Signature Healthcare is going to be closed for a little bit uh, longer than we thought. Uh, and there's also some great things going on, like the um, unveiling of the uh, statue to Marvin Hagler, which we'll talk about as well. Um, and anything else that's of interest to uh, folks in and around the Brockton area. So we'll be right back. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm an essential worker here at BMZ, and I'm a nurse. Nurses are essential here at BMZ because as nurses, we really have the opportunity to make an impact. We have very small ratios, so we have the opportunity to really learn everything about the person served and be able to give the best care. It really serves such a great purpose for me as being a nurse and really why I came into nursing. Learn more about nursing opportunities at bmzjobs.org. Giving a voice to the voiceless, pulling stories out of the shadows and putting them under the spotlight, making sure that each person is valued and cared for. This is Humanity First with Peter Evers, presented by BAMZ. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Humanity First, and welcome back to Mayor Sullivan. Hi, Mayor Sullivan. Peter, thank you again for having me on your show. I love joining you. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, well, it's, it's always great to talk about such a wonderful city of Brockton, and, and, and you are such a great ambassador for the city. And I know that we've just met, uh, that I saw you earlier on today at a celebration for the Athena Award to Beverly Williams, who is a uh, member of our staff who has been with BAMSI for about 20 years. So it was very nice of you to come and say a few words there. And I understand that you were very busy at another event today, which is a, 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 as a big boxing fan. Um, you Tell us a little bit about the Marvin Hagler. Yeah, no, thank you. So really historic day in the city of Brockton. And uh, we unveiled and dedicated a unbelievable life-size a uh, bronze statue of Marvelous Marvin Hagler, undisputed middleweight champ in the world from Brockton. Uh, he reigned from 1980 to 87 and uh, was just really an example of someone that grew up in the city, overcame adversity, um, was committed and dedicated and didn't take no for an answer. And he became the reigning champ. And, you know, in my humble opinion, he was the best middleweight champ. And in the 80s, and I was a kid growing up in the 80s, it was great, great. If you like boxing, the sweet science, I mean, you had Hagler and Hearns and Sugar Ray and Duran and uh, Hopshaw, uh, Alan Mentor yeah. uh, was the Alan champ. Yeah, 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 from England. And, yeah. And that's who Marvelous Marvin uh, defeated um, to become the champ. And so, you know, when I became mayor, of course, we were dealing with the pandemic and all those things. Um, but I, I really wanted to articulate that we have an unbelievable statue in Brockton for Rocky Marciano, heavyweight champion yeah. of the world. But that was a gift from the World Boxing Council uh, based out of Mexico. Yeah. And it was a gift originally going to Boston. And then Mayor Menino at the time said, no, it should go to Brockton. And it's huge. It's the largest in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. But Marvin didn't have one. And so I reached out to State Representative Jerry Cassie and said, Jerry, is there any way we can get a really unbelievable memorial to Marvin? And he said yes. And they came up with $150,000 in the last two legislative cycles. And uh, we created a statute committee. And, and today, uh, you know, was the unveiling. His wife, Kay, a wife of 31 years, uh, flew in. She, she lives in New Hampshire, but also in Milan, Italy. And 
Um, a lot of Hagler family and friends were there, and the statue committee was there. Vito Antifermo uh, had oh, two yeah. great fights with Marvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and why we picked today was actually for two reasons. Number one, 1993, on this day, he was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame up in New York. And um, also, this is a date that uh, I think it was the first fight with Antifermo. So the anniversary was today. So um, I'm excited as, as a Brocktonian, um, but I'm also really thrilled that it tells the story of the next generation. That statue will be there forever. Yeah. Everybody uh, really commented, Peter, that it looks just like him throwing his, his left hook. It does. Uh, the belts that are there. So we went out um, and looked for different national sculpting companies. And we went with Broden, which is in Minnesota. Uh, and it really looks like Marvelous Marvin throwing a punch. And so today was a really great day. We had over 400 people. Um, I wanted it to be located downtown, the statue, with all the development going on yeah. and the commuter rail. And um, and really where it is right now, it's on Petronelli Way, um, which when I was a kid was called Ward Street. But he would have run by this statue because he ran up and down Ward Street to go to the gym, the Petronelli, Petronelli Brothers King. Gym, yeah. Goody and Pat Petronelli. Yeah. And, you know, so we created a new street called Marvelous Marvin Hagler Way. And so now this is a dedicated park, Marvelous Marvin Hagler Park. So it's just a great day, Peter, a really great day in the City of Champions. It, it, it is. And, you know, of course, I, I want to tell a little story. I was in England when when Hagler was at his peak. And uh, Britain is crazy about boxing. Yes, and and yes. actually has a couple of good ones now. But, um, but when the fight with Sugar Ray Leonard happened, which I think is one of the biggest tra travesties of boxing. Thank you, Peter. Thank uh, you. I agree. I, I totally do. Um, there's this really funny story on the BBC. Uh, Sugar Ray was being interviewed by a guy called Hugh McElvenny, who was the biggest boxing commentator and writer. Very, very bright guy. And they had this really interesting conversation. And you could tell that McElvenny wanted to say something. And right at the end, he said, I got to tell you something. I don't think he won that fight. Did he say that? He, he did. did he? And and Sugar Ray pushes the table over. You can probably look this up and walks out, and that's the end of the interview. But, really? But there was something in Sugar Ray's mind that said, you might be right. Oh, yeah, he was right. <laughs> I mean, how do you take the belt away from a champ on a, on a split decision? Yeah. You can't do yeah. it. So, uh, But, you know, when you, you think about boxing, Tommy Herron's, uh, Hitman Herron's best three rounds, not just in the no. middleweight division, but I would say in boxing, yeah. uh, you know, it was a war. And um, we we had the ability to 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 talk about Marvelous Marvin as a, a dedicated philanthropist. He has funded so many kids that go to Massasoit Community College. He was a trustee yeah. there and um, scholarships and just you know at the end of the day, um, he never forgot about Brockton and yeah. where he came from. Yeah. And just a stand up dude, you know, yeah. and just a really good guy. Um, had the pleasure of bumping into him actually in a pub in really uh, yeah in Boston back in the early nineties. Um, and of course, many people will know that he was an action star in Italy, yes, he right? Was. And, yes, he was. Where he went after he uh, when he finished That's right. his career. That's right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, typical of Brocktonian in many ways. And I, I just wanted to shift the conversation, if we can, sure. to what's going to be going on this summer and what's happening in Brockton. You know, and there's a few things that are on my mind. Um, first of all, the hospital situation. You know, it is. Um, We've had a bit of a perfect storm in some ways, yeah. right? With um, with the filing for bankruptcy um, uh, of the steward system, and then we've had another delay in the opening of Signature. Although I will say they've been they have been open. Yes. They've had their urgent care centres, and they've done a good job with that. Um, any inside scoop on that? Yeah, so you know, I uh, I've created a really good working relationship, friendship with Bob Haffey, the good CEO guy. of Brockton Hospital. Great guy, yeah. Signature Healthcare, and also Matt Hesketh, a great guy, yep. uh, CEO over at Good Sam. And I speak to both those gentlemen quite often. Bob and his team give me updates every other week, and so there's a little delay. The hope was to open up in June or July. Now it looks like it's probably going to be early August, uh, uh, early September after August, so early fall. Uh, it's not perfect, it's not ideal, but we're all hopeful that it opens up as soon as possible because it's gonna take away the burden for South Shore uh, and the influx at Good Sam. And then the same thing with Good Sam. The good news is I've been told, reassured, myself, Congressman Lynch, Senator Markey, state delegation, that um, Good Sam's not going to close. It will be acquired. Um, but we need both of those facilities to be operational. Of course, we have the VA as well, right? But, um, you know, the Good Sam is, is, is critical care trauma, right? So it's cardiac care, stroke care. And uh, it's a regional hospital located, both of them in Brockton, but they draw from outside of Brockton. So yeah. uh, in the near future, but not just quite yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. And any idea about acquisition? Any, any 
big players in the market? Yeah, I'm not privy to that, but uh, <laughs> I've been advocating that I, 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 my preference would be uh, a nonprofit. Me too. Um, that you know has a, an experience in uh, in a community like Brockton, um, and I just think it makes sense. It makes business sense, but it makes common sense and medical sense. So yeah. um, I'm crossing my fingers. Yeah, I mean, uh, in in another life, when when the acquisition happened with Stuart, um, I was working um, at um, Carney Hospital, of course, which was part of the Car- yes. Caritas Christi. Um, you know, and it was a different, it was a totally different uh, culture when, when Stuart came in. And, you know, I would agree with you. I think we need to move back to the, the roots of medicine, which are, you know, not profit oriented, but, you know, working with populations, looking at disparities of health, making sure that we're, tr- that we're, we're fighting those social justice issues. And, you know, uh, certainly need to do that. You know, Peter, I was 10 years as a volunteer board member. I chaired the board at the hospital at Good Sam. And I agree with you, it changed once Cerebus. The, you know, the hedge fund down in Manhattan, Wall Street, and then Stewart. So, um, you know, it's it's a lesson learned, tough lesson learned, um, but we need exceptional uh, health care provided. And um, so, you know, we, we'll move forward, but we'll move forward together. Yeah, yeah. Let's get back to that. I, I like that idea. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to talk a little and broaden this conversation out a little, a little bit is that, you know, I, I live in South Boston, not too far away, and, mm-hmm. and, and I actually probably spend more time in Brockton than I do in South Boston. And I've known this, uh, I've worked three different times over 30 years in Brockton. And I've always felt that the, that Brockton gets a bad rap um, when you put the news on the local news and even sometimes the, uh, the international news. I mean, I hope that Sports Center run a piece tonight on Marvelous Marvin, Marvin Hagler. I hope so. I really do. I hope so. Um, but you might see a story, you know, about a fight in, uh, at Brockton High School where a teacher gets a bruise on, oh, oh, I'm not diminishing it, mm-hmm. but, you know, the, uh, whereas you wouldn't necessarily hear that about, you know, Wellesley or Weston or, or, or Winchester. I'm going with the W's. Yeah, there you reason. go. There you go. <laughs> um, does that frustrate you sometimes when the lead story about Brockton is always something negative and, and, and a portrayal uh, of a city which has so much more than that? It does. It does. And, and not just as the mayor, it does as a lifelong Brocktonian. Um, my wife and I met at Brockton High. We're raising our kids here. My parents are still here. My in-laws are still here. You know, Brockton is a city. It's the only city in Plymouth County, 106,000 people. So it's a, a massive city, right? And so, you know, to not really do fair reporting on sharing the great news of the kids that are going on to Ivy League schools right. or going to serve our nation or going to the workforce. And, you know, it, it is frustrating. I mean, I understand news could be sensationalism and all that stuff, but uh, we have our own story to tell. And, uh, you know, as as the mayor, my whole goal has been to market Brockton like a corporation. It's a business. We're in the people business, yeah. right? It's a half a billion dollar business. Yeah. So, you know, I just try to work with the administration. Uh, the governor and lieutenant governor are huge supporters. Uh, Healy Driscoll administration, huge supporters of the city of Brockton. Again, developers investing in Brockton. We have the commuter stop so you can jump on a train, get into Boston 35 minutes. And largest public high school east of the Mississippi still. And yeah, still. it's not just public school we have charter school and parochial schools and you know we have professional baseball right the knockouts yeah, the are knockouts, here now yeah. right we have the brockton have rocks a couple of tickets yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean i mean we have that we have the fuller craft museum which is one of the yeah. best craft museums in the nation and we have a municipal golf, golf course, course which is unbelievable and now we're going to be opening up the east side pool which is a six million dollar renovation from the federal government um and that'll be opening this summer and we have the pool at the high school we have an ice skating rink at the high school so it, it, it does frustrate me, Peter. It really does. But I know the Brockton uh, and the Brockton that's depicted on the news is not the Brockton that I know every day. Uh, but we can do better. You know, we, we can do better. We're dealing with issues. You know, there's definitely drugs and mental health and behavioral health and alcohol issues and crime. Um, but when you have 106,000 people, you have to expect to deal with those things. And so um, I concur with you. I hope ESPN runs the story tonight. I know the Globe was there. The Herald was there uh, today at the Marvelous Marvin Hagler. So, you know, the news media was there and um, we'll just continue to forge ahead. And it's kind of like how great Bamsey does. You know what I mean? We got to get that message out. Well, you know, it's, it, it, of course, our fate is absolutely tied in with Brockton Correct. because we're such a, an organization that is Brockton centric. Although we, we, we go out to Worcester and down to Plymouth, but, you know, workforce is definitely an issue um, with us. We have a number of vacancies and oftentimes because people can't find housing. Um, You know, I think about the fact that when in 2000 and in 2000, the average price of a home in Brockton was 350,000. Now it's 450, right? I mean, that's good, but it's also difficult 
uh, for new Americans and people coming into a gateway city. And I'm really proud of the fact that I work in a gateway city. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, this is what America is about, right? Yes. <clears throat> a city where people can come, which is how we were founding, and um, and and make our way. That's right. Um, and that wor that worries me. What is our housing stock? Are we able to? And of course, we have an influx of new Amer Americans that we're dealing as well. So there's a, a lot of pressure on Brockton at the moment as well. And I mean, housing is is an issue, right? It's not just a Brockton issue, right. but it was, but my memory of Brockton is Brockton was always a place where people could get a start. And, you know, hopefully we're, we're thinking about affordable housing. Well, the great thing about affordable housing in Brockton, um, number one is, is when we adopted chapter 40R, which is called Smart Growth Zoning, any developer um, within an area of Brockton, which is in the zone, has to uh, at least give no less than 20% affordable housing yeah. in the developments in the core of the city. So we're seeing people, you know, come to Brockton right now because it is cheaper um, compared to Dorchester and Southie and Charlestown and, and you know, even Quincy and Braintree. So we're seeing yeah. some people, but then we also seeing some people leave and go to New Bedford and Fall River. So it's a little bit of a balancing act. And, um, you know, Brockton's always been a welcoming, inclusive, unbelievable city for uh, new arrivals, including my grandparents, right? I'm a dual citizen. I'm an Irish citizen and an American citizen. And, um, you know, largest Cape Verdean population in America is here in Brockton right. and a huge amount of wonderful residents from Haiti and Angola and Nigeria and Latinx communities. So. Um, it's something that I'm cognizant of. It's something that the city planner works on. And, and we you know, articulate to the developers, you can't do less than 20%, but you could do more than 20%. Right, right. that's right, pushing that, pushing that and continuing to do it. You know, I, I think about how, I was thinking the other day that, you know, Manchester, New Hampshire, right, is actually the same size as Brockton, right? And that's the largest city in, in New Hampshire. Yes. And then I thought, you know, I'm a bit of a nerd about these things. I thought, I wonder how many, how many, if, if Brockton was in how many states would it be the biggest city in in, a, in, in that particular state? And I, I didn't finish, but I counted like 15 or 16 states. Really? Right? Yeah, I mean, you, you think about Lincoln, Nebraska, right? Yes. Smaller than Brockton. Yes. And actually, on game day, for the Husky, oh, for the Husky. For the Husky. They, there's more. They double because a hundred thousand people come in to watch. Can you imagine a college oh, team watch? Imagine that. But but you know this is a city of consequence, right? If you begin to think about that, a, a, you know a city that is giving people a chance, um, and conversations like this do help to make people think. What about Brockton? You yeah, know great. when they're thinking about relocating. Um, you know the same way that people think about you know what about Gloucester or, or, or whatever and I think we've got to see, keep pushing Brockton and think about it it is equidistant almost from Providence and, and Boston yes um, people think it's a long way I will say that the the commuter rail isn't always a good thing for us because then people can just hop on the hop on the train and go to to, to Boston, but we getting those people back yes. because they're saying, oh my goodness, you know, maybe they pay more in, in Boston, but it costs me $350 a month to get in right. on the train, right. which is ridiculous if you ask me. Um, and, you know, or I've got a park and the cost of living and things like that. Yeah, we, we are, we, this is a little jewel. Uh, and, we, and you know, I think you're doing a good job of sort of countering some of that, you know. Uh, you know, Peter, negative. it's funny. I, I, again, I, I some people say I have bad luck, right? On Murphy's Law, I became mayor, I dealt with COVID. COVID. We had the ramifications of the brutal murder of George Floyd and, and then the fire at Brockton Hospital and the school side deficit we're dealing with. But, you know, my view is this, um, we, are an unbelievable city, we really are, and we need to continue to welcome people to Brockton, but also showcase the talent that's here, the extracurricular activities that are here, the offerings that are here. You're right, you can jump in a car and get into Providence, go into Boston, go to Cape Cod. So geographically, we're located in a great place. But the number one asset, and if Brockton was a stock, we should all buy it, are the people, people. that live in the city of Champions. Totally, I mean, these are hardworking people who are, who are making the city great. Um, I do think, you know, the inclusive, I think you've done a good job as well on the inclusivity issue. You know, um, last Saturday or the Saturday before, you came and spoke at our, um, our Pride um, celebration, which I think might be, have been the first in Brockton. So, you know, uh, that was wonderful. Um, Juneteenth um, uh, is coming up. Oops, sorry, Juneteenth has just happened. Um, you know, and again, this ability to have conversations about inclusivity um, and these conversations about, you know, when you when you look at um, inclusion, when you look at equity, 
you're not taking away from one group of people. You're actually leveling the, leveling the playing field. And all of the, uh, we were just at the Athena Awards and one of the things that somebody said was when you get diversity and leadership in organizations, the results are better yes. because, the, because the field of knowledge is wider. Pushing that as well, I think, is, a, is something that Brock can, can really, has really benefited from. So I thank you for that. No, I appreciate it. And again, I, I appreciate you always offering me the time to come here. And, you know, I'm probably the number one cheerleader of Brock. And I love the city. This is a special community and, and I'm biased. But, um, you know, it's it's the efforts of, of you and your team at Bamsey as well that make a difference each and every day in people's lives in the city. But also, you know, beyond Brockton. And, and that's what's so special about Brockton. People may live in Brockton and then move out. A lot of my friends from the high school did that. We graduated, I came back, they didn't. But you're always a Brocktonian, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think that's that's the goal. We talk about city of champions, but it's truly the people that live and work in Brockton that are the champions. And so I'm just happen to be mayor now, but I'll be a lifelong Brocktonian. Yeah, and we're very privileged to do that work in a great city as well. So thank you so thank much you, Peter. as thank usual you. for coming in and hopefully we can have another conversation soon. I look forward to it. Thank Thanks. you. Bye everybody, thank you. Thank you.